Did you know there are actually vending machines that sell short stories? That's awesome! You can select the length of the story, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, and you get a random short story to read. I do hope they selected the stories in those things carefully, getting one of those plotless mm, slice of life Alice Munro short stories in an airport is the kind of thing that can easily ruin your day and make you wish never to read a book again, but maybe it's just me that I, I have a problem with that type of literary short story. This month in literature, this video is a video in which I give you a few articles, I mention a few articles that I read around the web in the course of the last month, which I found excellent reads and which I think you should read too. Every week on my Patreon page I post a collection uh, links to a few articles I found interesting on websites such as The Millions, Paris Review, Los Angeles Review of Books, uh, those types of uh, usually halfway between features and essays and thing pieces. Uh, this week the must-read article I'm going to mention is a piece by Kevin Power, which I already mentioned in my recent review of Mao Chu by Don DeLillo. Power's article discusses the idea of DeLillo as the king of sentences, as this writer who writes in such a beautiful and brilliant prose and whose sentences are instantly memorable so that everyone remembers those beautiful passages from White Noise or Underworld. Uh, it is all falling into the past, which is probably a misquotation. Uh, but does this hide a sort of danger? Is there an implied danger here that this beautiful prose, instantly memorable, uh, may occasionally distract the reader from more important things, such as characters and plot? The discussion is filtered through a short story by Jonathan Lethem called The King of Sentences, in which the Lillo may or may not actually be a character, but you do not need to have read Lethem's story to read the article, you do not even need to be a Lillo fan. It really deals with a basic concern of literary criticism, a basic question every reader has asked him or herself at one point, which is whether occasionally beautiful lyrical prose may not actually hinder the reading experience rather than making it beautiful. I once read a review, I can't even remember what book or who wrote it, where the reviewer said that, like any normal reader, when they hear about a book which is written in a poetic prose, they start running for their lives. And I can totally relate to that. I do, uh, I do find occasionally hard to stomach prose that is too lyrical, uh, whereas at times it, it's not always the case. It's not usually the case with the Lilo uh, with me. I usually find uh, stuff in the Lilo's novels, be it about the plot, be it about the book's reflections, that keep me reading and keep me interested. But anyway, read Power's article. Uh, moving on, uh, in um, next week I'm going to review two amazing, incredible novels I read recently, which are Asymmetry by Lisa Halliday and The Pishes by Melissa Brother. Uh, they both came out recently, uh, The Pishes in particular came out on the 3rd of May, I think. Uh, I'll put links in the description box. As with any all of these articles, I put links to features on both of these writers. Uh, the one on Holiday is from The New Yorker and it goes beyond what is kind of the main charm of her novel, the most superficial one, uh, which you'll learn about if you read the article, and delves deeper into the book, uh, whereas the one on Melissa Brother is an interview with her where she discusses the genesis of her book. I never read these things before I approach a book, but in this case, since I had such a good time with both, I was very curious to read more about both of these novels. Uh, do bookmark these articles, Check out the, inter the, the review by the book chemist, of course, and the, read the novels, read Asymmetry, read the pieces, they're great. Bruce Handy on the New York Times wrote a brilliant think piece where he says that since nowadays comic books and graphic novels have basically entered the mainstream and are now considered acceptable reading for adults too, of course, the next thing that she'll, uh, she'll take this leap, the next medium, let's say, is picture books, and I couldn't agree more. I hadn't read a single picture book until a few years ago. They're not that popular with children in Italy. I think they may be a, a maybe Anglo-Saxon uh, thing. Maybe it's just that Italy do, do not ha does not have many of those. But still, I, I discovered them recently and love them. The picture books 
are such a complex medium. The balance of word and illustrations is so subtle. You find a, ma a mastery there that is comparable to poetry, and some of the artists writing them are awesome. This amazing thing is Journey by Aaron Becker, which is just incredible. I, can, I could read this thing all day. Uh, and it fires up your imagination in such beautiful ways, but it's such a wide world that it, it's... Uh, I mean, recommending a, a single picture book is a bit like recommending a single book to someone who has never read literature. You know, it's so vast. Do read the article by Bruce Handy uh, and do, do know that there's such an amazing source of entertainment out there that you may not have tapped into yet. The next piece is an article I was kind of hesitant whether to discuss or not, whether to mention or not, for the very simple reason that it doesn't really touch upon literature that much. It, it does, it talks about literature, but it talks about things that are so much more important and so much more serious than the stuff I usually talk about in my very silly videos. Huno Diaz uh, recently wrote in the New Yorker very uh, an article that was much discussed in the month, in the course of the month, where he talks about his experiences with abuse as a child in the Dominican Republic. Huno Diaz is the author of the brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde, uh, which I mention all the time in my videos because I think it is one of the best books I've ever re I've read. Yes, um, it's among my very very favorite books. Uh, and, you know, it's a powerful article and it took me, I mean, I kept thinking about it for a few days. I, I was, I, 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 I remained reeling from the reading experience for a while, uh, be in the right frame of mind when you decide to read it, but it's absolute powerful writing and it, discussing, it discusses the way trauma isolates us uh, from other people and how, it, how difficult it is to relate with others in the, considering these difficult experiences. It's just too much, but it is a must read. Finally, I'll close on a somewhat lighter note. Uh, I just read this morning that apparently some American uh, theatre company has put up a five and a half hour production of 2666 by Roberto Bolaño, one of the novels you guys recommend to me the most in the comments to my videos. Uh, and it's going to be available to stream for free online if uh, if anyone out there is going to enjoy those five and a half hours. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm sure the, the, the show itself is amazing, but you know, maybe when you're in the theater with the whole experience, sitting in front of a screen, I'm not so sure. Anyway, I haven't even read the novel. Maybe it's that awesome. Maybe it's worth those very long hours. Uh, good thing is, I mean, good thing. I don't know for who, uh, is that I actually plan to read it very soon. Uh, now that I, I read The Savage Texas by Bolaño and liked it so much, I'm really curious about 2666. We'll see. Uh, hopefully, maybe next month, I'll let you know what I think about it when I've read it. Thank you for watching, as always, guys. In a second, I'm going to put links on the screen to other videos I, I posted in the course of the month. You may find uh, fun or entertaining or useful. As always, thank you for watching. Bye, guys.